Hi, this is Chris from the Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from Political Voices Network. Here is the main question. Are there enough drama stings for today? (laughs) Say it with me. Ruthlessly absurd. (laughs) I think it's true just based on this headline, Trump attacks Mark Meadows. Uh (laughs) And Jack Smith. Uh (laughs) Yeah. Okay, yes, I have been working on my Jenna Ellis impression all night. Are you ready? Oh, it's a cross between Nancy Kerrigan and uh, Holly Hunter in Raising Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why me? I used to love him so much. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank and the you. Oscar Thank goes you. to... Thank you. Did you see what she wrote to Lindy Lee when Lindy Lee criticized her about a year ago? No. She said, cry more. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, God. So, Lindy Lee retweeted that yesterday it said who's crying now so lindy mm-hmm. everybody drink up the salty salty maga tears yeah. that we are given <laughs> oh reminds me of catholic school body of blood of christ <laughs> i can't get enough can you I'm no. so thirsty no. for more salty maga tears <laughs> thank you jenna thank you mark meadows you slimy treason weasel oh my god mm-hmm. Yeah, Jody. So we were saying that's the big question: is we don't know. Right. This is obviously bombshell reporting from ABC that Maggie Haberman was obviously from the New York Times uh, talking about that we don't know. Because I keep saying, even based on this, he should be under the prison. I, I understand agree. how immunity works and flipping up people, and that Donald Trump is the ringleader. But oh my God, the fact that these people are getting away without jail. I mean, I who would like. <laughs> Who would like some Mark Meadows fun facts? Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, pardon me. (laughs) He's lost some weight. Has he? Yeah, I noticed that. He seems a little stressed. Well, I was looking for photos of him to illustrate our website. Someone said uh, no one had to coax him that once Cassidy Hutchinson flipped, he probably ran to the, waited outside the special counsel's office, like waiting for Springsteen tickets in 1985. Which I did once. I didn't. Did you? Because my roommate had to work, and so I went. She said, would you go wait? I remember it like it was yesterday because I had, I I mean, I like Springsteen, but I didn't, but she was like a fanatic, so she's like, will you go? You were four. Yeah, when I was four. (laughs) You waited in line. The rest of the story isn't going to make sense. You slept outside. (laughs) My roommate's like, can you go, please? Anyway, it was like hours and hours and hours in line, and I I got my, Aunt Aunt Flo came. Oh. And which is, I know, early at four. It is. However, Chris, <laughs> I don't. Believe oh my you. God! I don't. They were the you. worst cramps of my entire life. Oh, I hate those. Yeah, remember those old like Midol commercials where the woman would just go, "Oh no," and then take a Midol and everything but and be fine. It's not like that. You don't it's, have them anymore. Oh, sure I do. It's. I obviously started when I was four, and so she went through menopause at twenty. That's right. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. What? No, I remember watching those commercials. Yeah. As a kid, going before, after, and during what? Yes. I don't know why. I just connect that with waiting for Springsteen tickets is that I had a horrible. I think I actually turned a color of green. I know those. I know that feeling. And I came back and I was I like, don't. here, Becky, here's your lucky? stupid Springsteen tickets. I almost died from menstrual cramps. Oh, no. There's times where I couldn't stand upright. Yeah. Oh, God. I had to those kind bang of, that the kind ibuprofen. Of pain. Okay. Sorry, Chris. I know. We, <laughs> we stumbled into the tampon tax. Yeah. Yesterday, <laughs> and we apologize to you. He doesn't want to know what flow how, means. Well, no, I know what flow means, but how big... Do I'm, tampons need to be? Look at it, Chris's it, Instagram and, the, and the, the sweet picture Chris posted of me and him. Because he said this is the law. Lo- not just with a woman, with anyone. You said this 26 years with this woman. Yeah. Longest relationship yes. of my life. Me too. Aww. As the guy that owns the show says, I'm his longest well, relationship except for the mother of his children. After, you know, we had a couple of estrangements in and there. like any good couple, we took a couple of years off. <laughs> we weren't estranged. We weren't estranged. Like, you know what? That's what you're calling firings. No, well, it's a trial. no, you were fired. I was never fired. Right. Well, we weren't estranged. <laughs> trial separation. We just got fi- okay, I got fired, so then that means you got fired. No. Well, no. And then we go had to, had to go find other jobs for a couple they years. They kept me on to like play commercials for Radio Disney or something like that, and I'm like, I can't do this anymore. So that's <laughs> when I looked for another you job. You lost the will to live without yeah. me at minute. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's a sweet picture from LA Sexy Lou. Yes. Aww. Thank you, Christopher. I feel the same. All and right. you look fantastic in it. Oh, thank you. I Yes, my uh, beer belly... Slash pregnancy was less visible from do? that angle. It was it was hidden by a drink. Oh my god! Someone <laughs> tweeted, "When are you due?" I will cut. I will jump through the Twitter machine and kill you.
in in the photo that I posted, you're hiding your beer belly with a drink. Yes. Well, <laughs> well which that's is important. why I obviously have a beer belly. <laughs> <laughs> you do not. Okay, have I mentioned that I eat super healthy and I exercise two hours a day? So now I'm just going to stop eating entirely. Then you won't be able to exercise. Yeah. Sometimes that one tweet is going to it's going to be years before I eat again because of the one tweet saying when do you do. Sometimes when menopause comes along, shut the, up. Women get a pooch. It's not menopause. Women, women get a pooch. I beg your pardon. I do not have a pooch. <laughs> okay. Where was I? Oh, I hate, now I hate you. See how this <laughs> this is what's gone on 26 years. Love, hate. Love, love hate, hate, love, hate, love, hate. hate. Uh-huh. Why we've survived so long and never gets boring. you have any love, hate songs you can play? Uh, yeah. Okay. Mark Meadows has spoken. This is the reporting with special counsel Jack Smith's teams at least three times this year, including once before a federal grand jury, which came only after Smith granted Meadows immunity to testify under oath. So I assume that means you're getting a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for giving someone immunity, particularly somebody that's this close. That yeah. He is just as involved in this as Trump just about. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is extraordinary. Sources said Meadows informed uh, Smith's team that he repeatedly told Trump in the weeks after the 2020 election that the allegations of significant voting fraud uh, coming to them were baseless. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. The opposite of what he said in public, what he said in his book. Oh, spineless treason weasel. Meadows also told investigators Trump was being dishonest with the public when he first claimed to have won the election only hours after the polls closed on November 3rd. Obviously, we didn't win a source Uh close to... Meadows quoted him. ABC News has identified several assertions in the book to contradict by what Meadows told investigators behind closed doors under oath. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, oh, according to the Meadows' book, the election was stolen, rigged uh, with help from allies in the liberal media who ignored, quote, actual evidence of fraud right there in plain sight for anyone to access and analyze. Meadows privately told, isn't this the whole story yep. of the Republican Party today? Yep. Privately, they did said X. Publicly, they said Y. I mean, oh. Uh, that to this day, he has yet to see any evidence of fraud that would have kept Biden from the White House. That he told him he agrees with a government assessment at the time that the election was the most secure in United States history. I live in hell. Okay. Under immunity order from Smith's team, the information Meadows provided to the grand jury earlier this year can't be used against him in a federal prosecution. Huh? I can't wait to talk to one of our legal lads or ladies about exactly what all this means, but. Smith's investigators, uh, uh, speaking to Smith's investigators, Meadows conceded he doesn't actually believe some of the statements in his own book. Oh, my God. This is why you must buy a I'm not buying your stupid book t-shirt <laughs> yes. at stephaniemiller.com because don't buy their stupid books. They're all lies. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Meadows told investigators he doesn't agree with what's in his book. Uh, when it says our many referrals to the Department of Justice were not seriously investigated. While promoting his book on right-wing uh, media in November, he told a uh, podcast asked, host asked if he believes the outcome of the election was fraudulent. He said, I do believe there were a number of fraud- fraudulent states. I've seen at least illegal activity in Pennsylvania and Georgia. Oh, my God. You're a lying okay. sack of crap. You're a lying sack of crap. You're a lying, scheming, stinking, nasty sack oh, of liquid Oh, how about crap. this part? Portions of what Meadows told investigators appear to align with broader testimony that uh, other White House aides, including Cassidy Hutchinson, offered. So the, I'm sure a lot of apologies will be forthcoming to Cassidy Hutchins for, Hutchinson for calling her a lying whore and whatever, whatever essentially, all these right-wingers. They, they're maybe not that's paying why she, attention. Maybe that's why she couldn't join us. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Still hoping we're rescheduling. We don't know why. <laughs> we, <laughs> probably, like any, if we're basing it on the last 26 years, Chris, it's something I said. Well, yes. <laughs> it was perhaps my speculation about how could any young woman be a Republican at this come to the light with us way. She looked at the list of, of shows that she had to do that day, saw the Stephanie Miller show, yes. and said, uh, no, no. scratch it right off. <laughs> Like, that's new. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, this part, uh, I don't believe. Meadows was specifically asked by Jack Smith's team if Trump ever acknowledged to him he lost the election. Meadows told investigators he never heard Trump say that. I yeah, think he did. He bull- said, I can't believe I lost to this guy. Yeah. Well, he said th- that. that's what Cassidy Hutchinson also he said. said so, uh, you know, I, I mean, and if he doesn't tell the truth under an immunity deal, man, Mm-hmm. Oh, this guy's got to go in the hole. I'm telling you, and the pokey. gotta go in the pokey and the goose gal. Huh? Okay, I don't know. I just, you know what? I yeah, just, what are you doing I just over there? Disemboweled this ABC News story. Now I don't know if I got to all of it, but you get the idea. You get the idea. It's all out of order. Yeah, I mean, You're I'm just, I'm discombobulated <laughs> because we've, I, I, 
What did Tom Emmer didn't even get one tenth of a Scaramucci? No. What was it like two hours? <laughs> two or three two hours. hours. They yeah. didn't even have time to find a head of lettuce no. to see which would last <laughs> longer. We couldn't even. We didn't even have time to compute the Scaramucci ness of it. Yes. For God's sakes! And now it's what? Who? Johnson? Somebody. Yes, I've already heard maybe Lauren Boebert will be his deputy so that she can give him a hand. Okay, I've heard the jokes. It's funny. If it's Get it? Johnson. He's going to give Johnson a hand. A hand. Lonnie a almost called his band Lonnie and the Johnson. Pardon me? What's Lonnie's that? last name is Johnson, so he almost had a band yeah. called Lonnie and his yeah. Johnson. Yeah. Um, and also, in other big bag of rats news, uh, Liz, yeah, Sahil Kapur says Liz Cheney's team is circulating in the New York Times uh, piece reporting on Mike Johnson's role in rallying objections to certifying Biden's victory in the 2020 election. I love that. So Trump shivs Emmer at the last second because he, even though he signed on to the stupid the lawsuit thing, yeah. to overturn the election, that wasn't election deny right. enough. So right. Trump shivs him. Uh-huh. Trump doesn't have the juice to get his like jordan in nope. right but he you know he still has the juice to cause chaos and yep. scare enough of yep. these giant spineless trees and weasels yep. he wants the not government voting. to shut down yeah. he wants everything to shut absolutely. down absolutely until he it. gets his way yes yeah. yes only oh, i alone can fix it oh look at all this chaos who could have caused this Anyway, He's an they, arsonist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What Liz Cheney uh, re- re- retweeted the Times saying, informal statements justifying their votes, about three quarters relied on the arguments of a low profile Louisiana congressman, Representative Mike Johnson, the most important architect of the Electoral College objections. On the eve of the January 6th votes, he presented colleagues with what he called a third option. He faulted the way some states had changed voting procedures during the pandemic, saying it was unconstitutional without supporting the outlandish claims of Mr. Trump's most vocal supporters. His Republican critics called it a Trojan horse. That allowed vo- lawmakers to vote with the president while hiding behind a more defensible case. Oh my God, the cowardice of this party. They're going to write volumes about it someday. Anyway, so that's the guy, and we don't know if he has the votes either, but right. yeah, but that guy. Yeah. It's, he's what? Insurrection is light? I don't know. But that's what, you know, the Times even saying he's not, he's just low profile, but he was actually the architect right. of it. So it's, mm-hmm. he's even, oh my God, and plus he's a anti-choice yep. lunatic homophobe god with awful. poindexter glasses awful just awful he looks oh, like poindexter a little by the way mm-hmm. hang on can we have this joy oh. read clip real quick before we break because it's <laughs> it's fun people are just literally laughing out loud so uh ali vitelli was on joy read discussing because this was one plan they floated yesterday is <laughs> kevin would be Jim Jordan's what assist, uh-huh. assistant? Yeah. Uh, where? Which Wh- one? Which three. Three. Okay. Oh, three. Yeah. But no, 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 no. Uh, one. one. Let's yeah. Let's start okay, with here one. We go. Yeah. Spent some time reporting over the course of the last few minutes with our colleague Scott Wong that there is now a push being floated by former Speaker McCarthy to be reinstalled as <laughs> Speaker McCarthy <laughs> alongside Jim Jordan as the assistant <laughs> Speaker. Out. Two points to make here, and I do hear your laughter. <laughs> that was Joy Reid and Tim she Miller fell. just losing their collective shizzle. Okay. Well, yes, Joy fell out of frame. She did. Yeah, two. <laughs> two points to make here. The first is one source who was... <laughs> I can't even continue with you. <laughs> now they're all laughing. Let me finish. One source who was briefed on this idea told me that it would work like Pelosi and Catherine Clark, speaker and assistant speaker. So there is technically a precedent for this. Mm-hmm. Okay, last one. But there is also very much an office reference here about Dwight being the assistant to the regional manager. And I think that's <laughs> probably more apt because as your laughter suggests, this is probably not going to happen, but it's being floated, and we just report the we, we just report the news here, Joy. <laughs> can I keep my? I was told I could keep my speaker's plaque. We're going to need to go ahead and move you can I, can I, downstairs my, into storage. An honor gavel, maybe a little, a smaller gavel. We have new people coming in, stapler? and we need all the space we can get. Okay, all right. Oh dear God. Mm, there it is, my first drink of the day, Zbiotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic. Many of you know my, my story. I stopped drinking wine for three years during COVID, during the lockdown as part of a health reset. Now I drink wine in moderation, but this is an amazing new product. I've always believed in probiotics and Zbiotics. Check this out. You drink just one of these. It's the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. I am 
using this and I feel great in the morning. I don't have to worry if I have an extra glass of wine, I still feel great in the morning. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. I've always had acid reflux problems. It is this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. All I know is it works. It is Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic. Go to zbiotics.com slash political voices or scan the QR code on the screen right now.